Hello everyone. This is a story about how we use containers and a thriving open source neuroimaging community to increase the accessibility and reproducibility of a neuroimaging pipeline. But the takeaway is this. Publishing a concise description of your computational environment, similar to the one seen here, is probably one of the best things you can do to increase the reproducibility of your work. And descriptions like this one are concise enough to fit into the appendix of most publications. Okay, let me back up a bit. I work in the neuroimaging lab that releases FreeSurfer, a software package that provides morphological analyses of neuroimaging data. So for example, you give it an MRI like the one on the left, and it will segment the brain into various structures and compute a bunch of statistics. The infant pipeline operates on subjects that are 0 to 24 months old, which is a challenging population due to the morphological and MR contrast changes during this time period. FreeSurfer's infant pipeline is a key tool in an ongoing collaboration between Massachusetts General Hospital and the University of Cape Town to study how the gut microbiome and human milk oligosaccharides mediate the impact of maternal HIV infection and antiretroviral drug exposure on infant brain development. The pipeline has several dependencies, which can make replicating environments exponentially more difficult as the possible number of software versions increases. And this is for sophisticated users. Replicating exact environments is near impossible for others. Containers provide an elegant solution to this problem. Environments can be specified as a text file, like the one seen on the left, called a Docker file, and tools like Docker can be used to build, run, and share environments with collaborators. Now, while Docker is great at specifying environments, it lacks a framework for easily reusing individual components. While multi-stage builds partially alleviates this problem, a, a tool to help mix and match software versions and create Docker files would streamline the process considerably. This is where NeuroDocker comes in. NeuroDocker is a great open source tool to help pick and choose exact versions of software packages and easily create Docker files. For example, the NeuroDocker command on the left generates the Docker file you see on the right. And you can see a full list of the software they support in the templates directory of their GitHub repository. NeuroDesktop is another great open source tool that, building off of NeuroDocker, packages all the neuroimaging tools into a convenient browser accessible environment. On the left, you can see Freeview, which is FreeSurfer's GUI, is being used to inspect the outputs of the pipeline, all running inside a Docker container and accessible via a browser window. On the right, you can see some of the software packages that NeuroDesktop supports, and there is a quick, there's a little code snippet there as a quick start guide to get you up and running with desk, NeuroDesktop quickly. Thank you very much. Uh, this work was only possible due, due to the wealth of open source software available in the neuroimaging community, so I'd like to express deep gratitude to anyone who's contributed to, the to these specific repositories or to the open source community and more generally. Uh, there's more info at the link there on how we're using containers to increase the accessibility and reproducibility of this pipeline. And I'll end with a question. If we wanted to extend the timescales over which we're thinking about reproducibility to say 10, 20, 50, or even 100 years, what would we have to do? For long-term reproducibility, or if you're operating in a heavily regulated environment, it might make sense to cache the network traffic during Docker build operations. H how can we do that? Uh, I I've got this feeling it's a, it's a very quick job for the right kind of Unix wizard out there. Uh, and if that's you, I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much.